today we are going to understand uh, routing protocol for iot infrastructure in short it is called rpl this routing protocol has a full name like ipv6 routing protocol for low power and lossy network and uh, it is considered as uh, the de facto routing protocol for internet of things now this particular protocol can work on ip version 6 as you all know uh, we have two type of addressing uh, logical addressing uh, phenomena one is called ipv4 and another is called ipv6 ip version 4 is uh, uh, can be represented with 32 bit and ip version 6 would be represented in 128 bit now this particular protocol is is working in ipv6 it is also um, uh, can be converted into ipv4 but it is saying that it is supporting ipv6 since it is standardization ipv6 has contributed to the advancement of communication in the world of tiny embedded networking devices by providing along with other standards a baseline architecture for iot so it is saying that this routing protocol for low power and lossy network is uh, is a standard protocol and it is contributing in iot infrastructure for the communication and uh, we all know that the first component of iot is the thing or the devices which is nothing but the network of wireless sensors and in this particular uh environment where the sensors are very tiny they have a small range they have less uh very less uh communication capability so in that particular environment this type of protocol which is dedicated for those tiny or embedded network devices is very much useful now here let's talk about what do you mean by this uh, low power and lossy network okay now what is low power and lossy network uh typically compose of many embedded devices with limited power memory and processing resources so it is just like your sensor nodes so when we create any iot infrastructure the first component is the sensor nodes and this particular sensor nodes are the combination of sensor and the computing node or the computing device which is also called microcontrollers so these sensors are attached with the microcontrollers and these microcontroller is again a very tiny devices which has the limited power which has limited memory and which has limited processing resources so for those type of uh embedded devices this routing protocol is very good and that that is called low power and lossy network means your wireless sensor network is the low power and lossy network and it is suitable for it so it says that the typically uh, this uh, lossy uh, low power and lossy network typically composed of many embedded devices devices with limited power memory and processing resources interconnected by a variety of links such as ieee 802.15.4 and low power wifi so this 802.15.4 is the standard for two layers that is physical layer and data link layer and in there we have many protocol like wifi means it is 802. Uh, uh, 802.11 uh, so it is working on that the wifi 802.11 and 802.15.4 is for uh, the low power devices the the data link layer protocol or the the combination of physical and data link layer protocol for low power devices so it says that whatever communication we can use it we can use it and in that we can use the protocol which is r uh, this uh, rpl which is routing protocol for low power and lossy network there is a wide scope of application areas for low power and lossy network including industrial monitoring uh, building automation 
heating, ventilation, air condition, lightning, access control, fire, connected home, healthcare, environmental monitoring, urban sensor network, uh, energy management, asset tracking, et cetera. So these are all applications of IoT, right? These are all applications of IoT. So in all these applications area of IoT, uh, we have these type of devices, which is, or these type of networking, which is a combination of these devices, which have the limited power memory and processing. So this protocol is for those type of network, which has those constraints. Now routing protocol for low power and lossy network, which is called RPL. Let's talk about that particular protocol. This RPL is a distance vector routing protocol. Uh, here the routing is based on distance oriented acyclic graph or DODAC. So in short, we say distance oriented acyclic graph that is uh, in short, we'll say DODAC. Uh, so you, you know about DAG, right? Uh, directed acyclic graph. But here we are saying distance oriented. One uh, term has been added in uh, directed acyclic graph. And the whole infrastructure is based on that graph only. And this RPL is based on distance vector routing where the main, uh, main uh, objective that we have to minimize is the distance between two nodes. And we have to make the link in such a way so that the directed acyclic graph has been found. And this directed acyclic graph is based on the distance. So, so the whole network, we have to create the infrastructure uh, in the form of DODAC. Okay? Before understanding RPL and how these DODAC are formed, we need to understand some basic terminology and key concept which are at the heart of this routing protocol. So let's see some of the terminology and key points related to this. The terminology related to RPL are, the first is directed acyclic graph. So what do you mean by directed acyclic graph? It is a graph that contain no cycle, right? So if you see this particular figure one, and you can see these are the nodes and these are the edges to the nodes. And in this, you don't find any cycle. So a graph without a cycle, sometimes it is called tree, but it is not actually a tree, right? In, in tree, we have one root and uh, we have a, a leaf node, we have non-leaf node, but it is a type of graph which doesn't have the cycle. We see this kind of graph in a spanning tree. So in the spanning tree, we have seen this type of graph, but actually, uh, the DODAC here you can see is in the form of uh, in the form of graph which doesn't have the cycle. Now the second term is called root. It is the destination of the node in DAG, which is the directed acyclic graph. It has no outgoing edges. So if you'll see this particular graph, this particular graph look like the spanning tree and having the root, and every node are pointing towards that particular root. Now up and down, there are two concepts. Up, it is an edge that is uh, uh, directed towards the root. So if you'll see the figure one, so there are the root, there are the edges or there are the edge which is pointing towards the root, okay? That is called up. Down, it is an edge which is directed away from the root, okay? Which is called down. If you'll see this particular red arrow, actually it is looking like it is a down arrow, but actually it is an up, up arrow. Why it is an up arrow? Because this arrow is pointing towards the root. Okay. So that's why it is, it is an up arrow. So these type of arrow, you have to see where it is pointing and in where uh, towards root it is going or not. Now let's see some more terminology related to this. 
next is the destination oriented dag which is called do dag which is our concept this is a special kind of dag where each node uh, want to reach the single destination okay like the figure one and each node is pointing towards the root node Next is the objective function. It helps us to decide whether we are near to the root or away from the root. Objective function is decided by the programmer or the designer. It is sometime uh, uh, which we want to minimize. It can be energy, it can be latency. Once we decide what we want to minimize, we give it as a number. Now here the the minimization objective function that we have to use is the distance and distance is in the form of rank number or the number that we are providing here. So this node is what is the distance from the root is, is only one hope. So we have given rank one for this node. It is of two hope. So we have given rank two in that. way. Now, what do you mean by rank? It shows uh, in figure one, it is the distance from the root is called rank. RPL instance, uh, when we, uh, we have one or more DODAC, then each DODAC is an instance. Figure two shows how RPL instances are. So we may have, see the whole sensor network is divided into two DODAC. So one DODAC has the, this is the root and for another DODAC, this is the root. And these are the two instances we say, the RPL instances. Next, the DODAC ID. Each DODAC has IPv6 ID, which is of 28 bits. This ID is given to its root only. And as long as the root doesn't change ID also doesn't change. So what is saying that as long as the root doesn't change, the ID also doesn't change. So you see, I told you that it is working in IPv6, version six, right? IP version six. Why, what is the meaning of IPv6? IPv6 is telling you that that what is the addressing that we are using. So ultimately in the internet of thing, we have to connect the node to the internet, right? This is our objective. So to connect to the, to any node to the internet, we have to give the IP address, then only it will be, uh, it is allowed to connect with the internet. So here we are talking about the root node and this particular root node, this particular node root node will get the IP address and it is of IPv6 because we are talking about RPL and it is working in IPv6. And it is also supporting IPv4, okay. DODAC version, each new shape of DODAC each new shape of DODAC means a new version. So here you can say this is one DODAC, this is another DODAC. Now what is goal? It is where a DODAC want to reach. It can be wired network. Goal is different than objective function. And objective function, uh, our aim is to minimize how our goal is, where we want to go. Now it says that, what do you mean by a goal? So in the goal, we talk about uh, where a DODAC infrastructure want to reach, right? It can be wired network goal. And goal is different than the objective function. So in the objective function, what we are looking for, we are looking for to minimize something. Now, what is our objective function here? We have to minimize the distance from the root node. That is our objective function. Our goal is where we want to go. 
so there is a difference between goal and the objective function now the next concept is grounded what do you mean by grounded when a deodag reaches its goal it is known as grounded so when a deodag reach its goal it says that it is grounded g is uh, in figure 1 shows a grounded deodag okay now there is another concept called floating when a deodag is not connected or is yet to reach the goal it is called floating so this type of a deodag is called floating f in figure 1 shows the floating deodag okay so this deodag is called grounded because it reached the goal and this deodag hasn't reached the goal that's why it is called floating now let's see some more terminology there is a called parent parent node so parent is where arrow is pointing towards and a child is where the arrow comes from right so parent is we are pointing towards the parent and child is where the arrow is coming from and child and the parent can have multiple children similarly a children can have multiple parent now let's go to the another concept called sub deodag it is an sub tree of given deodag so any sub tree of a deodag is called sub deodag storing there is a storing nodes keep the whole routing table they know how to go from one node to another node is called storing node then there is a non storing node also they are simple they don't store an entire routing table they only know about their parents so there are two type of node in the network one is called a storing node which has the entire routing table and the second one is is called a uh, non storing and they have only the parent node information the whole deodag except from the root has to maintain a uniformity it has to be either a storing or non storing node root is always a storing node so the root node is always a storing node and but there is a difference uh, node Uh, different nodes are there some nodes are called storing node and some nodes are called non storing nodes now let's go to the uh, rpl and let's see how it is working now there are uh, some packets control packets which is required in this particular uh, rpl uh, this routing protocol so the first control packet is called deodag information solic uh, solicitation and what is that when no announcement is heard and if a node want to join a deodag is send a control packet for that it want to know if any deodag exists exist so the message which is sent is like is there any deodag let's say there is a node and the node doesn't heard any anything uh, about the deodag so what it will do is it will send the dis signal to it will send or it will broadcast the dis signal uh, towards the network and uh, in the network if somebody is is there in the deodag they will reply it the second control packet is called deodag information object now what is that this message is multicasted downwards a given node in deodag may multicast this message which lets other node know about it now what happened this doi is required uh required to be multicasted by each and every node which is the part of the deodag and why they do do that they want to do that so that the other node will join it which lets other node know about it things like uh, whether the node is grounded or whether the node is storing or non storing node it announces other node if they are interested to join and let me know so this doi control message has only one objective is that it is searching or it is looking for those node who want to join another thing is they will they used to tell their status also what is their status 
what is the status of that particular node so they that thing also can be communicated to the nodes which is in the downwards next is diodec advertisement object dao it is a request sent by a child to parent or root node so this is a, a request that has been sent by a child node so once it will receive any type of doi node it will uh, send the advertisement object this message request to allow the child to join the diodec and in that way this uh, message is requesting the child to join the diodec and it the child is sending it to the parent or the root node now dao acknowledgement is once the parent or the root receive the doa it is the response sent by the root or the parent to child this response can either be yes or no so the child is requesting to join with doi and parent or the root node will reply it with doa ack acknowledge it says either yes or no you want you will be allowed to join or you will not be allowed to join consistency check deals with security and right now we doesn't have to uh, read about it now what happen is we have a new node which is not the part of the uh, do deck so what it will do is it will send the dis signal dis is it is saying that a new node is there and it as it doesn't heard anything so what it will do is dis signal will be sent to the old node which is the part of the uh diodec and then it will send that dio dio means it will tell the new node that what is the st status of that particular node or you want to join or not then the new node will give the request in the form of dao and then the whether the old node is the root node or the parent node will give the acknowledgement in the form of yes or no whether he is allowed to join or he is not allowed to join if the acknowledgement is yes then this new node will be the part will be the children of this particular old node and old node will be the parent of this particular new node this is the way how the link will be established between two nodes now let's see how this diodec formation will take place root in diodec is a special node all node doesn't have the capacity to be root a uh, root is programmed that way so we have a root node and as you all know that only the root node will have the ip address it means that only in root node has the permission to be connected to the internet i told you earlier that we cannot give the ip address to each and every node in the network the the reason is because we doesn't have that much of public ip address available all the time second is it is not advisable to uh, to make this type of expensive network infrastructure instead what we do is we give the id to all the sensor nodes in the network and we have the gateway node which has the ip address so you see here the root node is the gateway node which has the ip address okay now suppose that we have uh, we have five nodes in the network a b c d e and they have to make the diodec then following step will be taken care so the first step is a multicast dio now what what a node will do is a node will multicast the doi what is doi doi you know that the doi is the uh, control packet which is sent by a node which is the part of the diodec and it will tell all the other node in the downward that what type of node it is and it is saying that do you want to join right so a will multicast the doi when a will multicast the doi based on the distance all the other node that is b c d and e will will uh, uh, find out the 
distance in the form of rank so this a b c d e node upon receiving d o i will try to join regardless of their distance upon receiving u i they also come to know that their distance from a is 1134 so we have the distance like b distance is 1 c distance is 1 d distance is 3 and e distance is 4 then a b c d e send d a o so as we all know that the d a o will be sent by the child node to join to it is a request to join the do diagram right so they will send d a o so d a o will be sent by all the nodes to a now after that a accept them by replying the d a o acknowledgement so here it will give the acknowledgement and once it they will get the acknowledgement they will be linked with a so everybody is pointing towards a so there is a arrow so arrow has been uh, has been not visible here but there is an arrow towards a and there is a rank rank is completely uh, the distance with the root node okay now the next step is now another round begins what round a has done its uh, uh, its uh, uh, multicasting of doi then the next node which is b and c which is uh, a one hope distance with the root node will broadcast doi now a will multicast the doi and it will reach to d and e c will multicast d doi it will reach to d and e now both d and e will find out the distance with b so for d the distance is 1 for e the distance is 2 for with c the distance is 2 for d and distance is 1 for e Okay, so this is how it will be. The day received these and figure out that what is the distance from B and C that is one and two respectively. Similarly, E received these DOI and figure out the distance from B and C is equal to two and one respectively. Since D is closer to B and E is closer to C, therefore D send DOI to B and E send DOI to C. Now, what is our objective function? Our objective function is to minimize the distance. so we have to find out those node which is which is of less rank right so d will find b as 1 right with rank 1 and d is find c with rank 2 and d is find a with rank 3 so which one is the lower lower is with b so d will send the the request to b with dao message that it want to join this particular parent now b will do an acknowledgement or send an acknowledgement to join once the acknowledgement will be received by d d will make make a arrow towards b it says that that d is the child and b is the parent right in that way and what is the rank the rank is what is the distance with a right and this this is telling about the distance so we have to reduce the overall distance and the overall rank right so the rank right now previously it was 3 and for e it was 4 and this particular uh, you can see the, the this is 3 and this is 4 right now the rank is 2 and 2 and their rank is 1 and 1 okay so this is how the uh, our do dag has been formed and this is how the uh, this uh, routing protocol will work now there are different uh, uh, nodes that is storing node and non storing node so generally the leaf node are non storing node and non leaf node are storing nodes including root node so that's all related to uh, the rpl which is a routing protocol for low power and lossy net